Hi, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I can't leave any dye behind. Acid dyes, food coloring, Kool-Aid. I just finished filming a tutorial for Knit Crate where I speckled some of their bare yarn with Kool-Aid packets, and well, we've got a lot of pigment left over, so I figured it would be fun to dye some more yarn. I think I used between half to two thirds of each Kool-Aid packet on the previous video, um, but uh, there's still a lot of pigment here. Now, in my dye pot, I have eight cups of cool tap water. Uh, I did not add any additional acid, but this is a pot I used previously with one packet of Kool-Aid, so there's probably a little residual acid in here. But now, we are going to poorly <laughs> add the powder, dissolve the powder in here so we can create another colorway. Yeah, I probably would have made more sense for me to dump the powder in versus trying to dunk the bowl at first, but you know, <laughs> this time I can clean off the rest of the grape. So the two colors, whoa, it almost looks like there's some green in that grape. Uh, the two colors that we were playing with today were cherry and grape, which are two fairly pigmented colors of Kool-Aid. Now, one thing I absolutely, absolutely love about Kool-Aid is that the, there is citric acid in these packets already, so you don't need to add additional acid to your projects. But there's also that additional level of caution because the more packets of Kool-Aid you use, the more acid is in your pot, which means the faster your colors will strike. So if you want a pigmented color and you use 10 packets of Kool-Aid, that's gonna have 10 times as much acid than if you were just using one. So that's something to keep in mind when you look at how quickly or slowly some colors strike. In order to dye yarn with food coloring, you need to make sure you pick the correct type of yarn. Uh, this technique will work on protein-based fibers like wool, cashmere, silk, alpaca, but unfortunately it won't work on things like cotton, linen, acrylic, or polyester. You can use like wool acrylic blends, uh, but you do need some of that protein fiber in there. In addition to the yarn, you need the artificial food coloring, the acid, which we've covered, and some heat. And it's really as simple as that. And this is so beginner friendly and everything is food safe. So I'm personally comfortable using my kitchen pots and pans for this type of project. Right now we are gonna dye 100 grams of dry dyer supplier superwash MCN sock yarn. This yarn is 80% superwash merino, 10% cashmere, and 10% nylon. And we're gonna add it dry to our cool dye bath with our hands. I'm not adding glo wearing gloves, I'm gonna get a little stained. That sort of is just the way things are going to be. Um, and so as I am adding this, you can see why we pre-soak usually because you can see that the dye is sort of unevenly soaking in. And in my experience with Kool-Aid, there is enough citric acid that colors will start striking pretty quickly. Now, I don't wanna be super, super rough on the yarn, but I am squeezing it to help the dye and the colors penetrate. But you obviously don't have to do that. If, if you want more even color, you should pre-soak first. If you want more uneven color, um, then, then just add it dry and start heating. But you don't wanna be too, too rough, but we are gonna have some beautiful variation, there will be some white patches, and you can see a lot of the color already is in the yarn. It hasn't been set with heat yet, but it is there. And we've got a sort of purplish red color in here. Okay, definitely, definitely tonal. Um, some of those areas that were white are now a little less so. And I'm now gonna start heating things up and we're gonna heat this for, gosh, I think about 20 minutes. One of the purposes of even filming this particular Leave No Dye Behind is to show just how much color I had left over after I had gone ahead and speckled some yarn. Um, and so you can do a lot with a total of two packets of Kool-Aid, especially if it's some of the more pigmented colors. 
Kool-Aid packets have a wide variety of pigmentation. I consider cherry to probably be the most pigmented so that way you can have a Kool-Aid beverage that looks red versus pink. And grape is also fairly pigmented in my experience. At the lower end of the spectrum, you've got your lemonade, your pink lemonade, and your blue raspberry lemonade. Those typically have a lot less total pigment, and so if you want a brighter color, then you will probably be using more of those packets in your project. But in this year and today, we have less than two whole packets, probably close to the equivalent of about one, and we still have a fair amount of color in our yarn. So there is a lot of fun that you can have with these packets. Now, cost-wise, uh, I think it's worth buying Kool-Aid for some of the fun speckling and things that you can do. But in general, buying vinegar or even citric acid powder and liquid food coloring or gel food coloring uh, does give you more pigmentation overall. But it all depends on what you can find and what you want to play with. And I can say that I've played with a lot of different types of food coloring, uh, beverages, and everything here on the channel. Uh, so make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications just turned on so you don't miss any of it. There are hundreds of videos here. It's a lot. <laughs> but feel free to leave questions in the comments and I can try to help direct you to a video that may help with your question. After 20 minutes all of the color is in our yarn. I'm going to turn off the heat and let this cool off slowly before we go and wash the yarn. I did, once the heat got up to start to simmer a little bit, I did reduce the heat while we were off camera and I stirred a tiny bit just to check on it, but uh, in general we've got this lovely medium mauve color here. Scent-wise, I wouldn't necessarily say one flavor dominates the other, but color-wise there's no question that I think the cherry dominates the grape color. Grape is a fairly red purple anyway. There isn't a ton of blue in that mixture. Um, and in fact, when I dye with just the purple, it almost has a bit of a gray cast. So I find that uh, sometimes you may want to add some blue to it if you want it to be more of a purple color. But I'm rinsing in cool tap water, adding a little bit of plain dish soap. Um, there is no bleeding here. Now, once again, if you want to dye yarn with Kool-Aid or food coloring, you need a protein-based yarn. If your yarn is cotton or acrylic-based, this point you will start to see a lot of bleeding and it, you might feel a little sad. You can certainly dye wool acrylic blends, wool cotton blends, those will work. I started off with Kool-Aid using only 20% wool, 80% acrylic yarn. Um, but you can see here with our Superwash Merino Cashmere Nylon that our dye bath is clear. Now I want to rinse out the rest of our soap uh, and we want a few extra rinses. Kool-Aid has some other stuff in there besides just the citric acid and food coloring. There's flavoring and things that we just want to make sure we wash out. But once this is done, I'm gonna go put the yarn through my spin dryer and hang it up to dry. Here is the finished dry yarn. Yes, we have some paler patches in with our more pigmented sort of mauve pink color, but it is a beautiful tonal. And I think that the fact that we added the yarn dry meant that we have a little more modeling, a little less even coverage, which honestly, I love. I think that this project is a great example of how you can just go for it when you are playing with color. You can put in a lot of thought and planning and pre-soak, but sometimes if you just go for it and let those colors speak to you, you can also create something really fun and magical. This tonal yarn is subtle and would knit up with a lot of different stitch patterns really, really beautifully. And it's also really, really soft. If you'd like to learn more about this yarn base, uh, I do have an affiliate link in the video description. I am a dyer supplier affiliate, which means that I do earn commission for any sales made through my links. Uh, but I keep using this yarn in my videos because I really enjoy it. It's beautiful, beautiful yarn. 
I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this episode of Leave No Dime Behind, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. Watching and engaging with my videos is the biggest way that any of you can support the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I publish at least two new yarn dyeing videos every single week on Tuesday and Friday mornings, but we also like to live stream and unbox and have fun along the way. And you really don't want to miss any of it. I've dyed a lot of yarn with Kool-Aid in my day, but there's still some colors that I've never seen. I think there's like a mango yellow orange color I'd love to get my hands on someday. But if you can't get access to Kool-Aid, don't despair. There is so much you can do with all different brands of food coloring. Uh, all you really need to do is make sure that it is artificial food coloring and you can create some really fun colors really, really easily at home. Thank you so much for watching everyone.